heard you fiddling around the kitchen. What were you at? Huh? I was just sticking me freebie yogurts in the larder. You weren't shoplifting again, were no! you? No! No, 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 I was in O'Stanky's Mini Market. They had uh, a newfangled biofungus yogurt promotion. Right. And the one said the yogurt had little creatures in it that crawl around your inside and clean up your pipes and sort of aid digestion and stuff. You're some arsegon getting involved with a cult. Huh? What's this about cults? I hope you were smart enough not to give them your name and address so they could contact you and further indoctrinate you with their ways. Of course they wouldn't be. But what have I had? You'll end up like Johnny Ballsack from Brown Logs Pass. He too filled in a survey for a brand new yogurt called Gob. Gob? Yeah. <laughs> Sounds creamy. <laughs> what if they do fruits of the forest? A week later, there was a knock at the door. There was a young couple there. Hello, Johnny. Have you had your Gob today? Have they won something? Johnny asked as he invited them in. They told Johnny that they just wanted to talk to him about Gob, and that it was not just a yogurt, but more a way of life. There was an old man sitting watching the telly. He didn't bat an eyelid. That's me old dad, said Johnny. He thinks I'm a feckin' idiot. Hasn't talked to me in over 15 years. The couple took Johnny aside and told him that if he came with them, he would have a much more fulfilling life with Gob. Over the next couple of weeks, Johnny attended a number of gob meetings. He got on well with all the group, and for the first time in his life, he, he felt like he fitted in. At the final gob conference, the head of Gob International, Yogi Gob himself, came to talk. He was a charismatic individual, and Johnny listened to every word Yogi said. It made complete sense, and all he wanted to do was go to America and join the Gob Brothers. <laughs> Sounds like a gob sheen to me. <laughs> so Johnny packed his bags and just before he headed out the door for his new life, he went to bid his father farewell. I know you think I'm an idiot, he said, but I'll prove you wrong and make something of myself, you miserable old fecker. For the first time in 15 years, Johnny's father turned his head away from the television set and looked him straight in the eyes and said, You're a shite hawk, and you'll always be a shite hawk. Johnny left with a big puss on him, and more determined than ever to prove his old dad wrong, he set off for his new life with Gob in San Francisco. Upon his arrival at Gob headquarters, he had to sign over all his worldly belongings in exchange for a sheet to cover his privates. The next thing he got was uh, five wives. Five wives! <laughs> <laughs> One for every night in the working week. Oh, and God only knows what he'd get up to at the weekend. <laughs> First thing he did was send his old man a postcard to let him know how he was getting on. I five wives. Who's the shade hawk now? <laughs> he boasted. Over the next couple of months, he began to enjoy the constant chanting and ritual body hair shavings. But it was the day he was summoned by his leader, Yogi Gob, that he really felt he had become somebody. Out of my thousands of followers, you, Johnny Balzac, are the chosen one. Johnny's face lit up. <gasps> He'd been waiting all his life for a bit of recognition. We will have a party in your honor tonight, and there you shall become one with Gob. Johnny ran back to his quarters with excitement and wrote another postcard to his dad. I'm the chosen one. They're having a party for me, so... Who's the shite hawk now? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so he sent the card and off he went to his party. There were thousands at the gathering and Johnny had a big proud head on him. After a bit of chanting, Yogi stood up and asked Johnny if he was ready to become one with God. I surely am. This is the proudest moment of my life. With that, the guards grabbed Johnny and tied him to a rack. But, but I, I, I thought he was the chosen one. Yeah, he was. But the only way to meet Gob is to go to the other side. You see, Johnny was to be this new cult's very own the sacrificial lamb. So what did they do to him? Everything. Even the old... H-P-U-A. Yep. Hot poker up the arse. 
But first they skinned him, and the whole time he was still alive, they cut his insides out and burnt them in front of him. He endured three hours of excruciating agony at the hands of his so-called friends. As he was breathing his last breath, as they were pulling out his teeth with pliers, poor Johnny Ballsack remembered his old father back in Brown Logs Pass and thought to himself, Who's the shite hawk now? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you something. Vib uh, coats are a bugger on your back. Yeah, you're right. Oh, what, what, what's that? What's that? Oh, no! Oh, Sounds like I'm... Granny's found me yogurt stash. Now look what you've done, you big gobshee. What? Well, it's that biofungus digestive yogurt. What? And Granny's been backed up for five months after eating oh, that dry cat food. He'd be like flushing out the channel tunnel. Oh, oh. Jesus. No. Oh. oh, you get the bin liners. Uh, I'll get the shovel. Oh, the smell. Oh, here. We better call the skip.